welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to Seeds of Knowledge, a broadcast outreach of True Knowledge Ministries International in Mannington, West Virginia, USA. In a moment, you will hear the teaching ministry of Pastor Nick Lally. Please prepare yourself with a Bible and pen and paper to take notes. Following the teaching, our address will be given so you can write us with your prayer request. Now, here is Pastor Nick Lally with today's teaching. And we welcome you by internet. We welcome you in this place. We welcome you out in all the viewing areas of our audiences. And uh, we're going to continue today on overcoming the orphan spirit. Uh, we've been looking at it. We're not talking about being a natural orphan. We're not talking about being a spiritual orphan. Okay. Uh, we're talking about being an orphan towards what our Heavenly Father has already paid a price for by sending Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to planet Earth to release for us and to conquer for us, okay? And uh, those, are, those are the issues. We'll look at some of them today because uh, uh, sometimes we, we take things in a spiritual way when really it's in a natural way that we need it, okay? So we'll look at that today. So I asked you before the cameras came on uh, to turn over to the Gospel of John. Did I say what chapter? Chapter 14. And as you're doing that, I want to recall last time we were together, we looked at uh, John chapter 8, verse 48 through 52. And as soon as Jesus said something that the Jewish people didn't like, they accused them of having a demon, okay? Because they didn't like it or maybe they didn't understand it. You have to remember the Hebrew church missed Jesus coming because he didn't come the way they thought he would come. Don't we deal with that today? A lot of times we miss God, we miss his blessings because he doesn't do it in the way we think he's going to do it or he doesn't show up in the way we think he's going to show up, and we miss it, okay? We miss it, just like the Hebrew church. You know, and then uh, uh, when he talked to them about, you know, truly, truly, I say, if anyone keeps my word in your heart, he'll never see death. And then they said, now we know for sure you have a demon, you know, because they didn't understand spiritual death. The separation would happen in the Garden of Eden when uh, Adam sinned. And I want you to notice I said Adam sinned, not Eve. Eve ate the apple, so they say it's an apple. We don't really know, okay? But he, she touched the tree, okay, that was forbidden to touch. Me, myself today, and what I believe and what I live by, I believe that tree is parallel to people using God's tithe, okay? He said, I give you everything else, but this one tree, leave this tree alone. And someone had to come along and say, you know, God doesn't want you to be wise. They're doing it today. God don't want you to be rich. He wants you to be poor. It's the same thing that's happening today, just in a different fashion. It's the same thing. Uh, but why do I say it was Adam's problem? Because Adam was the one who was put in the charge of authority. And uh, the, the men of the house, where there is a man of the house, the man is the one who opens or closes that door to the devil. Okay? You know, and that's in the, the Gospel of John also. All right, Jesus is the door to the church, okay? I'm the door to my home. Are you listening to me? And it goes on and on. So there's principles here. So uh, even though it was Eve who did the actual event, it was Adam's fault because he didn't keep his position to stop it. I always said, you know, uh, there's a place for, for a love for a woman in a man's heart that's enough to take that man to hell. That's why we got to have the Word of God to regulate everything. So when you start to say some things that people don't understand, like Jesus did, you know, he was saying, if you keep my word, you'll never see death. You'll never see separation from God, okay? When you start saying something to people that are beyond their measure, what happens, they're going to think you got a screw loose. They might not say you have a demon like they told Jesus, but they mean the same thing. Okay, or you're a cult, you know. I guess if they were saying to Jesus that he had a demon, I guess they'd regulate him as a cult, don't you think? You see what I'm saying? Okay, we don't want to become these people. Amen? We don't want to become these people. And we don't want to let those kind of people mess up our life. Amen? Make us walk around bound. Okay, so here's this. Before we move on to John chapter 14, I want, I quoted a couple of these scriptures, but I want to read it out of the Amplified Bible in Matthew 15. Don't turn this, stay where you are. And it says, 
So for the sake of your tradition, the rules handed down by your forefathers, you have set aside the word of God, depriving it of its force and authority and making it of no effect in your life. That's the traditions handed down by our, our forefathers. Talking about the, the traditions of man, okay, religion, making it of no, no effect. But listen to Luke 137 uh, in the Amplified. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. No word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. So we see here that we, we, we cautioned on traditions of man. Judaism, okay, which was for the Jews. Okay, the Judaism, it's the law. Judaism, uh, we're also cautioned in uh, the Apostle Paul brings out in, in Galatians 1.14. How could it be that you started out with this kind of gospel and you're under this one now? Okay, so what happened after they got born again, they said, you know, you still need to get circumcised, otherwise you're not born again. Okay, we got that doctrine today. If you're not water baptized, you're not going to heaven. You can't be born again without being water baptized. So what you tell me then is that if you don't get water baptized, which is a good thing, amen? All right, we're going to have a baptism service soon for those who want to get water baptized again if you want to. It's an outward sign that took place on the inside. I was water baptized. But if I had to get water baptized to be born again, then that means that my Lord Jesus Christ was not enough. Religion. You're telling me you're trampling the blood of Jesus, according to the book of Hebrews. But you're saying if I don't get water baptized, you're not saved. You're not born again. Well, then you're telling me my Lord and Savior, all the suffering he went through and everything he did was not enough to save me. You see what I'm saying? But yet water baptism is important. Every believer should be water baptized. It's an outward sign publicly of what took place on the inside. Why are you bringing this up? So you could see the difference on how the enemy works using something that's true, but turning it around for something bad. Okay? And, uh, you know, so most Christians, when they think that thought out, okay, especially over TV, when they think that thought out of what I said, they never looked at it in that way. Because many people said, you know, I never looked at it that way until you said it, that if I think I had to be water baptized to be saved, then what I'm saying is Jesus Christ, my Lord, was not enough. Because that's what it's saying, isn't it? That action, okay. So traditions in itself isn't bad, because in 2 Thessalonians 3, 6, Paul says, follow the traditions that you've seen and, and that I have done, follow these traditions. So the word tradition is not bad, okay? The word tradition is not bad, but we have to follow the Holy Spirit in the traditions. It has to line up with the book. Amen? It has to line up with the book. So the word tradition is not bad. Don't think that because it says, because of your traditions handed down by your forefathers. Don't we have natural traditions? Thanksgiving time, Christmas time, you know. There's nothing, nothing bad about any of those things. They're all good, okay? They're all good. Well, I'm sure for all of us, they weren't always good. But I'm sure we could all think back at times at Thanksgiving, and it was like, Oh, we're going to make it through this because there's going to be arguing, there's going to be drunkenness, there's going to be all this stuff going on in a lot of families, you know? You know? Uh, um, no? Okay. Must be just where I come from in Brooklyn, New York. I don't know. I, uh, you know. But anyway, you know, and then there's a time where, we, you know, uh, where those traditions could be turned around where we don't really enjoy them, but they are good traditions, aren't they? Okay. So I want to leave some good traditions. John chapter 14. You with me? Okay. And here's the key here before we read this here. When you have a relationship with the Father, that person seeks for the Father to be seen through them. That's what we want. We want to see God being so, seen through us. We don't want to misrepresent Him. We don't want to present God as a God who brings you, you're bad, you're getting disease. You're bad, we're going to get you to lose your job. You're bad, you're going to wreck your car. My, my, my. You know, we, you know we, we make an image of God that if you and I did these things to our children, we'd get locked up in the prison system. Okay? So watch those thoughts. God is a good God. 
He has nothing bad. Okay? If something bad happens, it could be just because you're in the world, or it could be we made the wrong decision. Amen? And God's enough to turn that one around also. All right, John chapter 14 and verse 9. And uh, Jesus said to him, I have been so long with you, yet you have not come to know me. Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Verse 10, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is uh, in me? And the words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me, living in me, remained attached to me, uh, does his works. Believe in me and that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works you themselves. So there's two ways here to believe. So I meet ministers and different people, and I don't believe everything they believe according to the Word of God, okay? Uh, but they do believe in Jesus Christ. But I look at the work that they have done. I look at the, the, the work they have. Now, I'm not talking about building buildings. I'm looking at the work they have accomplished, the work that they have done, okay? And you can see God has to be with them to even accomplish this. You see what I'm saying? Jesus is saying, if you, if you don't believe that, at least believe in what I'm doing. See what I'm doing. Amen? Believe what I'm doing. God wants us all to be examples. He wants people to look at you and say, man, yeah, okay, but look how God's taking care of them. And I said God taking care of them. I didn't say the government taking care of them. I didn't say your pension taking care of them. Okay? I'm talking about God taking care of you. Are you listening to me? And when I say things like that, don't think there's something wrong with the other side of that. But I'm saying what God declares. He declares for us to depend on him. Amen? Okay. So he says, otherwise believe because of the, the works themselves. Now listen to verse 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these, he uh, he will do because I go to the Father. Okay, what kind of works now? I know what a lot of you are thinking, because you're charismatics. Yeah, yeah, you're thinking about, you know, greater works I'm going to do. Miracles, people being healed. Amen? Casting out demons. I've done them all. Okay, and it's real. Are you listening to me? But I don't think, I don't think we need to look at that. What I think we need to look at is Jesus overcame evil. Jesus overcame sin. Well, right away, there's a greater work. So we're going to get more people saved. We're going we're gonna to be more powerful. We're casting out there. We're working miracles. New hearts are coming in. People are going to get new eyeballs. You know? What about living in the world without evil being in you? What about living in the world without you being full of sin? He, he give us that power to do that. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I understand. I like all those other things. You know. But how could you do that? How could you do that and fail every single day? Cry yourself to sleep at night. Are you, are you listening to me? So a lot of times we think that. You know, we think here, you know, greater works than ease uh, uh, he will do because I go to the Father. And we go, oh, yeah, praise the Lord. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the works... Uh, that I do, you will do also. Jesus overcame evil. He overcame being tempted, and he overcame life's challenges. That one right there is good enough for me. Overcoming life's challenges, because you get challenges every day. Every day you make a choice. Sometimes we make the right choice. Sometimes we make the wrong choice. Amen? <clears throat> you can't fail with God. All you could do is quit. So then he goes over here and he goes, uh, verse 13, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so the Father may be glorified in his Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Well, that's a big sacred cow today, isn't it? Two things right there, you know. I pray in the only begotten Son of God. You tell someone, hey, the Bible doesn't say that. It says to pray in the name of Jesus. When you go in a store and the devil's there, at once a blaspheme God, he uses Jesus Christ. He don't say Buddha. Amen? All right? He don't say Son of God. 
you know. So you might, a lot of people say, well, that's really dogmatic. Dogmatic means that's really, you know, following every line of doctrine. Dogmatic. No, it's not. Because any name that causes people so much resistance has to be the most powerful name, which the Bible says. It's the name of Jesus. So when I pray, I don't pray in the only begotten Son of God, and you shouldn't either. And I don't pray in uh, the name of Christ we pray. Okay, uh, Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ means the anointed one. That's why before the, the uh, uh, resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ, it's always Jesus Christ. Then you read in the Bible afterwards, it turns into Christ Jesus. That's how you could discern before and after. Are you listening to me? The anointed one. It means to be smeared with the power of God. The anointed one. Do these things matter? Absolutely matter, because if you're going to stay on track, you need to follow the word, okay? And that don't mean you've got to go correcting everybody. Correct your own house. Amen. Your mate, your children. Amen? Correct your own house. If you're not called to a position, it's none of our business. But that don't mean we have to do it because someone else does it. Amen? You know, this stuff with denominational stuff has to stop because it's a bunch of lies and baloney is what it is. Because if you look at great men of God, you had, uh, he's with the Lord now, uh, uh, Dr. Kennedy, powerful man of God. He's a Presbyterian. He'd make, he'd make jokes from the pulpit because the Presbyterians are known to be very conservative and quiet, you know. Uh, Dr. Charles Stanley, okay. We may not like everything he teaches, but God's anointed him. He's powerful. And he's made a difference. And so that's a Baptist. We, got, we don't have them all on our station or around here. But you have people that are Catholic. You have people that are word of faith. All different things. And they're walking with God. Okay? And if they're walking with God, that shows me that God works with everybody. Are you listening to me? Okay. And we need to know that. Otherwise, you get so, your soul wants to fight back against people. So if someone don't believe something like you believe it, okay, then you want to resist them. You want to, but instead of, you know, knowing you're not obligated by God, God didn't call you to do that. Are you listening? If you feel called to do that, eventually we'll make you a pastor. Amen. And you get plenty of opportunity. And practice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, and the Father might be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything, ask it in my name. Okay. Now, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Wow. How many people say, I love Jesus? I love you, Lord. But they don't keep his commandments. See, we, people that are not trained in the Word of God or don't understand the Word of God or never opened the Word of God in their own, okay, uh, don't understand that the commandments is not the Ten Commandments. The commandments is love. So if you love, you fulfill all. You didn't do away with the commandments. You fulfill them. Are you understanding? That's the New Testament church. Love. It's a commandment to love. When you don't like someone. You know, sometimes someone say, you love me, and I say, I don't only love you. I like you, and I respect you. Love I do because God told me to do it. See, the world will say, well, that's just phony love. No, it's not. Uh-uh, it's not phony love. Phony love is, if you do this for me, I'll do this for you. That's phony love. Amen? God's love is not phony. It's a, it's a decision. It's, it's like forgiving. Forgiving is you don't have get, uh, you lose your memory. You know, you choose to forgive. And every time that thing comes back, you say, Lord, I, I forgave that person. I refuse to hold that poison in me. Amen? <clears throat> uh, verse uh, 15 again. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Let me just read some of the words for agape, for the word love. Okay. Uh, to esteem, to love, indicating a direction of the will and finding one's joy in something or someone. Did you hear the part about the direction of your will? Amen? Direction of your will. It's a decision. That's the word believe in the Bible. 
For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, Romans 1, 16. For it is the power of God unto salvation, the miracle work and power of God unto salvation to all those who believe. The word believe means a total trust and a confident surrender. Total trust and a confident surrender. So where does God get his resistance? Because someone done us wrong here. You know. So right away, someone done us wrong here, we're going to watch. Hey, I've been burnt like that. And I want to let that happen again. Do it, it happens in marriages. It happens in blended families. It happens over and over again. Someone else, you know, uh, you say one thing and it sets off something in the head that the uh, that they went through before they were even with you and you're going to pay the price, buddy or lady, whatever you are, you will pay the price because it was never dealt with. It was just put under the carpet. Well, we take all these things to God and we begin to build an image of God in this fashion that we think, well, I don't know if I could trust him. I don't know if that's what God wants me to do. Are you listening to me? The word agape, love, God is love. I can't comprehend it yet, can you? You know, if you can, you got the wrong love. <laughs> because God is love, you know? God is love. Will and finding one's joy in something or someone. It differs from uh, phileo, to love indicating feelings, warm affection, the kind of love expressed by a kiss. Okay, it's a different kind of love than that. Let me tell you something, how I know we're, we're missing this love on planet Earth. Because we only do for our children and our grandchildren what we see for affection in this way here. If we really have the God kind of love that God commands us to develop in us, do you know the love of God was shed and brought in our heart by the Holy Ghost? Everyone's got it in here. God gave it to us. God never asked us to do something without giving us the power to do it. Then we would do what's true to our children and our grandchildren, even if they were mad at us, even if they got upset with us. But we're a pleasing race. We're a pleasing society. We want to please everybody. Okay? That's that kind of love. That's that kind of love. That's an affectionate love. You know, you take care of me, I'll take care of you. Okay? Are you listening to me? Nothing wrong with that. There is a place for that. But the God kind of love... The God kind of love is I tell you and put you on the carpet and I take you aside when you're doing wrong, whether you like it or not, whether you're going to ever talk to me or not, I'm going to do it because you're my responsibility. That's the God kind of love. Is it easy to do? Yeah. Very rare is it easy to do. It be forgets, you got to forget the word easy, okay? And God kind of love puts someone else before them. What's better for the other person? That's what we do. Better for the other person. It takes development to do that. And it takes an awareness of a responsibility that every single one of us have in our life. Okay? You know, uh, today, let's just take like Adrian with his little kids there. Adrian, from what I know of Adrian, he's not going to make believe he didn't hear something like most parents do. You know, if something goes, yeah, because, you know, you know, you don't have to teach children how to say uh, no. They learn no somewhere else. Amen? Yeah. Everybody says daddy's the first word or the mommy's the first. Usually it's no is the first word they learn. But, you know, some people just make believe they don't hear it. They make believe, uh, God will take care of that. Oh, it'll get better. See? But when you're walking in the, in the word, you have to take care of those things. It's our responsibility, like it was Adam's responsibility to take care of Eve, and he didn't do it. Okay. So, you know, is it easy? No, but it will bring the blessings of God into your home, into your children, and into your children's children without you laboring and laboring and laboring and trying to make everything work continuously. And after, you know, after a while, some of us learn that all that labor and everything that don't work anyway. Some of us learn. To love regard with strong affection... <clears throat> A corresponding noun. Okay, the great love wherein he is loved. Then it gives you different scriptures. I would look up that word if you if you you got a strong concordance. I would look it up. Agape. It's all the way in the beginning of the word. So there's over a whole page of that. That's our problem. Amen. That's our problem. 
See, we re regulate love by how nice someone talks. Okay? Hi, Pastor. How are you? I just like your teaching so much. You know? And they could have a, a, a resentful, prideful spirit inside them. Okay? Are you listening to me? Yeah, don't ask for the gifts of discerning of spirits because then you've got to be able to walk through earth with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you'll be looking at someone or talking to someone and you know they are lying in their face. They'd like to stab you in the back if you turned around. Okay. So, you know, but, to the, you know, we, we do everything by that person so loud. They're always angry. Right? Loud, angry. You know. Remember this here. What, whether righteousness or pride, it's what clothes your heart. That's the difference. That's where God deals with us, in the heart. That's what God sees, in the heart. Amen? That's Christianity. You know, when we get to the point to realize every rotten thing we thought, God, God hurt us. <laughs> you know, it's very rare. If you're in the flesh, you don't think that way. You know, you don't think that way. A guy came to me not long ago. And he says, I watched your TV program. I was so glad because you're the only preacher I heard that you could curse and be born again. And I just looked at him and I said, <laughs> I said, well, you know, well, I'm sure I said, you know, just because you're cursed don't mean you're not a Christian. But I don't say that's a good thing to do. <laughs> he came off like that letter. And actually, as he was talking to me, he cursed a few times. You know, so it was part of his vocabulary. I didn't say anything to him. You know, I prayed. I said, Lord, help him with this here. So in conversation of talking in 10 minutes, he cursed at least five times, you know. And, and we just talked and this and that. But uh, so, uh, you know, God knows I am not caught, uh, uh, agree agreeing or putting my approval on cursing, okay? I could curse if I want to. I don't have agnesia. I know all those dirty words. Grew up in Brooklyn, you know. You guys got them from West Virginia. But I choose not to. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? And what I was saying is, because you curse and you really were born again, that doesn't make you not born again. You know, because does it say that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and repent from your wicked ways, okay, it's a choice, you know, and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, okay, you shall be saved. Does it say also, and if you, ne if you ever curse again, you will not be saved? No, it don't say that. If you never smoke, if you smoke a cigarette, you're not saved. If you pick up a bottle of whatever, it's not saved. You know, we add all these things, you know, and then we got the big charismatic one. You'll know them by their fruit. Uh, I think that's a student, a disciple, not a, not a convert. Okay. So when I listened to that, I says, you know, God help me because I don't want to give the, the wrong impression. He says, you didn't give the wrong impression. You gave an impression of my freedom. Everybody will be held accountable for every word we speak. Thanks for listening today to Seeds of Knowledge. We would like to hear from you. Write us at TKM PO Box 46, Mannington, West Virginia, 26582. That's TKM PO Box 46, Mannington, spelled M-A-N-N-I-N-G-T-O-N, -N West Virginia, abbreviated WV 26582. You can email us at tkm at westco.net. Westco is spelled W-E-S-T-C-O. Be sure to visit our website at www.tkmi.org or you can hear this broadcast again or a wide selection of other teachings by Pastor Nick. Until our next broadcast, may God bless you and meet your every need.